let's take a look at a few examples that illustrate the different types of differentiability in functions. Now recall that for a function to be differentiable at a point, the derivative must exist. So graphically speaking, it means that only one tangent can be drawn at that point. And algebraically speaking, it means that the tangent drawn has a slope of measurable value. So a function is called differentiable on an interval if it is differentiable at every single point in that interval. So example number one, gt equals t over t plus one. We want to discuss the points where the function is non-differentiable and explain why. To do this, we first need to find the derivative. And the derivative based on the first principles formula, that's the only way we know how to find the derivative of a rational function, will be the limit as h approaches zero of g at t plus h minus g of t divided by h. Let's substitute the function g into the first principles formula or the derivative. So we have the limit as h approaches zero. So see that now we have g of t plus h. So wherever we had t, now we will place it by t plus h. So this t will become t plus h. And this t down here will also become t plus h. And then plus 1, obviously, because we have plus 1 at the end. And then minus g of t is t over t plus 1 over h equals limit h approaches 0. Long, long line. As you can see in here, we need to first combine the two rational expressions that are in the numerator of this big fraction which means that we need to make the denominators the same first. And for this, we'll multiply by t plus 1, both numerator and denominator. And we'll multiply by t plus h plus 1, both numerator and denominator, in the second fraction. So now we're happy that they both have same denominator, so we can bring them together in the same fraction. Remember to keep these denominators in factor form. And expand and simplify the numerator. So simply foil here. We have t squared plus t plus ht plus h. Here we have minus t. Remember, you have a minus before fraction. Attach this minus to the numerator. Makes it easier to simplify. So minus t times t, t squared. Minus t times h, minus t h and minus t times 1 minus t over h. Let's continue with the next step. Limit as h approaches 0. So we'll start simplifying here. This is the fun step, I would say. <laughs> so here we go, t squared and t squared simplifies to 0, plus t minus t simplifies to 0. And as you can see, now we ended up with all terms that have an h in it. Oh, wait a second. It seems that we can simplify th's as well. So let's do that. So the numerator will now have only h. The denominator will have the two factors, t plus h plus 1 times t plus 1, and then divided by h. Now remember, this is our main fraction down here, the division by h. So next step, we'll divide, limit as h approaches 0. We have h, t plus h plus 1, times t plus 1, and then times 1 over t, 1 over h, gosh, <laughs> here we go, we have h and h, that simplifies. So that would be the limit as h approaches 0 
of 1 over t plus h plus 1, t plus 1. It's time to substitute h by 0 and we obtain the limit at 0 equal to t plus 0 plus 1, that's t plus 1 times t plus 1. So we are going to say that the derivative of function g would be 1 over t plus 1 squared. So we'll talk about this derivative, whether or not it's defined for any real number x. So the first thing that I did in here was draw the graph of the function itself. So we're going to go with t over t plus 1. So we have y equals, I'm going to write, actually why not, we're going to write t here, divided by t plus 1. Okay, so as you can see, this is a graph of the function t over t plus 1. And what we are going to do is check and see and I brought the graph of it right here. Check and see where this function will have the derivative undefined. So as you can see, there will be a vertical asymptote at t equals negative 1, which means that at this point, we're unable to draw a tangent line. So obviously, this would be non-differentiable. But when you look at the equation of it, to analyze the non-differentiability algebraically, then we're going to have to find the restrictions. So we're going to say that t plus 1 has to be different than 0, so t different than negative 1. So therefore, the function is non-differentiable at negative 1. And the reason why is because the graph doesn't exist. There is no graph. The function is undefined at negative 1. So next we're moving on to the example of a square root function.